This week's episode of the Salt and Sauce Chat Show is sponsored by North Broad Street Records, bringing you the very best in unissued music. North Broad Street Records discovers and brings to vinyl cool, unfinished gems. For more information, please visit www.northbroadst.co.uk. Coming up on this week's Salt and Sauce Chat Show. I'm at rest, my heart would be 130 beats a minute. Uh, but that, that, was, that was just uh, normal, just, you know, sitting down doing nothing. They weren't uh, exercising or anything, but I didn't know that's that, you know, I just felt, I didn't know how long it'd been like that. But uh, he'd say, me, the, the heart turned and said, I could have, could have dropped at any minute. So what about, that was a mental team, crazy team, brilliant team, but this is that mad, that team. When we had a day out, Harry read that my manager used to put me in charge. <laughs> that's that. That's how mad that team was. I, I was in charge. I mean, what chance they got? He was meant to be in the recording studio. We'd take that to a new album. And I kidnapped him and took him to my bar. And then when he come back, they got the sack. So the story's in there. But I mean, we would have had we wouldn't have had angels. We wouldn't have had Glastonbury. We wouldn't have had one night at the album all oh, if it weren't for me. Welcome along to a lockdown special episode of the Salt and Sauce Chat Show. I'm David Simmons and on this episode I am absolutely delighted to be joined by former Millwall, Tottenham, Southampton, West Ham, Liverpool and Crystal Palace hardman centre half, reality star, after dinner speaker, author and all round top bloke. We've got Neil Razor Ruddock on the show this week. Razor, thanks for coming on mate. Are you, I'm Chef. And Chef, sorry. <laughs> I gave you su- such a good intro and I missed out the Chef part. Mate. <laughs> Thanks for coming on, mate. We do appreciate your time coming on. How, how's things been? I'm all right, thank you. Yeah, I had a, uh, I had a heart scare uh, about a, like a year ago now. I was filming, as you said, I was filming Harry's Heroes, but uh, I had a pacemaker fitted. But uh, lockdown, lockdown coincided with me, at me behave, actually behaving myself. So I was lucky, so I had no temptations to go down a pub or anything. So it, was like, <laughs> it happened last February and, and lockdown coming back. So it was a good time to recover. So it was good, really. <laughs> yeah, I mean, I watched Harry's Heroes. Um, I was going to talk about this a bit later on in the interview, but we'll touch on it just now. Obviously, yourself and Paul Merson had a bit of a fallout. Um, looking back on that incident, is is that all water under the bridge now? I mean, is yeah, that all? Yeah, I mean, it was, you know, I shouldn't be able, I had an art scan and I was still going out and Merce weren't happy. But the truth, you know, looking back at it now, I reacted because he, he was a good friend of mine, you know. And the truth first, when it comes to someone you love and, you know, we've known each other like 40 odd years now, so... When the truth comes from someone you love, it, it, it hurts you more. So I reacted in the wrong way. But he was right, you know. Um, I didn't realise how bad it was. But, you know, from from uh, from someone you love, you're trying to give me advice. But when someone you love gives it to you, you take it as criticism. So, yeah. You know, it, it, was, it was advice, but I took it the wrong way. Yeah, not... No, because, I mean, to quote the Daily Star, they, they quoted on the paper, they said, the former Liverpool and England star uh, believes he would be dead now if he had not appeared on the telly show Harry's Heroes, which uncovered a array of potential life-threatening health problems. Do you think that was the case? Did that show save your life, I mate? Well, I was, my heart was, I had a, up and down, my heart was going up and down. I, I didn't know. And at rest, my heart was being 130 beats a minute. Uh, but that, that, was, that was just uh, normal, just, you know, sitting down doing nothing. They weren't uh, exercising or anything, but I didn't know. That's you know, I just felt I didn't know how long it'd been like that. But uh, he'd say me the, the heart turned and said I could have could have dropped at any minute. No, oh, dear me. So it's a blessing in disguise that you went on that show. Yeah, yeah. But to be fair, sometimes I do wish I'd have I'd have split with Mercer. We never spoke again because he drives me mad on the phone. <laughs> <laughs> so uh, wait, don't stop texting us. I, I wish, sometimes I really wish we didn't have a, you know we didn't speak to each other ever again. Driving me mad here. Yeah, <laughs> looking back at your football career, then I mean, you've mentioned your good friend Paul Merson. Um, you have a glittering football career. It went spanned over two decades. Your highest appearances came from playing at Southampton, Liverpool, and West Ham. Your time at Liverpool, you're one of the Spice Boys, weren't you, Razor? Ah, yeah, I was old Spice. <laughs> <laughs> I, was, I was the old one. No, I, I was. I was on the. I was on the edge of the. You know, they was all the single. I was. I was a married one, so I couldn't really. I, I was dying to be in the Spice Boys. I'd have loved to be in the Spice Boys. <laughs> you know, I was, I was, I was super sub Spice. I mean, how? Um, so, so were you? Were you aware of the kind of antics that those guys, those guys were getting up to? Were you like the father figure, like you said, that they come back and told the stories to? Yeah, I had a Monday meeting morning. 
Mandy, mate. Mandy <laughs> moaning straight. Away. What happened? <laughs> Gil, did you see gossip? Yeah, I, like... I think I think that was the uh, you know that's when footballers really changed, become sort of household name superstars. You know, I mean before that there wasn't a line. I think it coincided with Sky Sky coming in and you, everybody, all footballers faces were on telly every day. So you know they come into everyone's front rooms and you know the the good looking young footballers become pop stars. They took over from the pop stars scene, you know what I mean? Because all the young girls, fans, all the footballers, they, they, they'd seen them on telly. So there was no chance of me being a spice boy if all the young girls were found. <laughs> uh, when you were at Liverpool, uh, well, how about. Young girls fancied me, though. I didn't do bad for the old girls. <laughs> When you were at Liverpool, how big was the rivalry between the likes of Liverpool and Man United? Were you aware of, obviously, you were heavily involved in it, mate. Yeah. I mean, was it, was it quite... I, I, I didn't realise, coming from London, I didn't realise, I, I always thought it was Liverpool-Everton. You know, I mean, there's a great rivalry. I mean, there's a sort of Liverpool-Manchester, there's a sort of hate, you know, the hate comes in, the word hate comes in, I've never heard, you know, between two fans, I thought it was a bit of a, bit of a laugh, you know, I thought Tottenham Marshall was... Was was you know I've, I've never been to a Celtic Rangers game so I've, you know what I mean I've never been to an third game so I'd love to see that but you know the the, the main night in Liverpool really did really did open my eyes to sort of um, football rivalry. Yeah, is it true that Eric Cantona offered your square go in the tunnel? Yeah, he's, uh, I used to turn him. He was brilliant, Cantona. So to try and put him off because he was such a good player to try because when he come through that that man. At Palace, you know, I, I thought I'd love to do that. That was great, you know what I mean? He'd been, a fan has been abused in us for years and years. And he, he's the first one that stood up to it, you know. But it, I, I'd like to see Derek Cantor do that at Millwall because we'd have never seen him again. <laughs> You're probably right, mate. come back on the pitch, his boots would have... And I'd have never had to play against him anymore. So I'd have loved him to not at Palace. He should have done it at Millwall. We'd never seen him again. But <laughs> no, I, I used to turn his collars down. Because he was a bit of a little bit crazy one, our Eric. So I used to turn his clothes down to stop him playing football. He didn't really want to play football. All he wanted to do was fight me. And he used to say, I'll fight. Every time I turned it down, he said, I'll fight you in the tunnel. I'm going, come on in, you French. So, <laughs> and, you know, so, and then he'd kick me out the backside. And, you know, the last time I'd done it, it was like a minute to go. It was the last time I ever played against about a minute to go. I've done it. He's coming off fighting down the tunnel. I'm going, come on in. I can't wait. I'm going to do this and do that. And, then he stormed off. He was taller than me, Eric Cantor. He's bigger than me. So I thought, you know, the final whistle gone, he sort of going, come on. And I thought, uh-oh. He might be. I'm now, I'm arguing with myself. No, he ain't. He is. I'm saying, I'll do him. No, you won't. I'm arguing with myself. Oh, no. So we're getting closer to, closer to the tunnel. He's down at the tunnel like that, looking big and brave. And that's with David James. I'm about 20 yards away from the strip for them now. And that's with David James, who was seven foot nine, bulletproof, James Bond of a man. The goalkeeper. He said, who's he shouting at? I went, I see he wants to have a fight with your son. So, <laughs> David James chased Chandler up the tunnel. And I got to the tunnel. Will the stewards went, where is that French son? So and And uh, so he, he retired after that. So I didn't have to, I didn't have to beat him up. <laughs> yeah. so, thank, thank goodness. <laughs> yeah, your time at Liverpool, um, you got to the final and you, you wore one of the, the very famous white suits. Do you still have really? that in the... Cream, sorry. Off white, but we go off off. They were cream. <laughs> off, off white, they were. Yeah. Two do, you, yeah. do you still have, have that in the, the wardrobe or? No, me and uh, we got drunk. We were, we had a. I think Liverpool and Planet Hollywood, they had Planet Hollywood after the game. So we had our own big Planet Hollywood one in Pink Dimmy Circus. So Liverpool, I had that for all the staff and families and whatever players. So me and Stan Collingwood got drunk and we went outside and the Eros is a big statue of Piccadilly Circus in London of an angel, big fountain with an angel. So me and Stan Collingwood climbed the Eros and I put my jacket over the wings of Eros. <laughs> Brilliant. I drive past it now and I think, ah, did I get up there? <laughs> it is unbelievable. Drunk. It is unbelievable. I've got, I haven't got down that hurt myself. So some punters probably now got your... your yeah. Jacket that you left, cream, your your cream jacket that you left up there. <laughs> Moving on for Liverpool, you, you went to West Ham. Um, now you, you've come out, you've said that you had some of the best laughs of your footballing career at West Ham. Yeah. Who were some of the characters in that changing room along with you? Oh, well, if I go through the team, it's like how, how football's changed. The team, the team, 
when I used to play at so West Ham, so we had Shaka in goal. Left back, we had these, these, were, these, these, this is how crazy this team was. This is how crazy this team was, right? So, in goal, we had Shaka, Shaka Rislop. Then we had left back, we had Julian Dixon, Stuart Pierce. Then we had me, Rio Ferdinand in the back. Um, right back was a ginger ninja, Stevie Lomas. Then we went across, so we had Trevor Sinclair, oh, Frankie Lampard, Joey Cole. Michael Carrick, Al Berkovich, Vivian, Mark Vivian Foe. Then up front, we had Di Canio, Leo Wright, Johnny Artson. Uh, did I say Defoe? Uh, Defoe, who else? Oh, there's no like Ian Wright. That's some team. Oh, oh there's no more. So what about, that was a mental team. Crazy team, brilliant team. But this is how mad that team. When we had the day out, Harry read that my manager used to put me in charge. <laughs> that's, how, that's how mad that team was. I, I was in charge. I mean, what chance they got? What chance did I have? So, I mean, I mean, the lives I had in that team, you know, the team like Johnny Monker and people like that, you know, Ian Wright and all the youngsters. We were, they were just great. Big Johnny, Johnny the Bear Arts. And, oh, my goodness gracious me. Yeah, I mean, uh, he's obviously got the connection up here in Scotland to Celtic, and, and so is Paolo. Yeah. Paolo Di Canio, how, how were they guys to play alongside him? I know that uh, Parsons is a good friend. Craziest, not the craziest footballer, the craziest person I've ever met in my life. You know, he's one of them, he, he is, he was just, how he could be a manager. If, if we was all sat there and say, right, one day one of you lot are going to be a manager, right, it was going to, Di Canio's going to be the first one, never going to be a manager. <laughs> then let's start with everyone else. <laughs> you know, oh, the, he, oh mate, he was just, it, so crazy. He was the best professional I've ever seen. Like, as he stand behind, working, working on free kicks, working on his touch, working on pace and all that. But he weren't wired up right in. Never wired up. <laughs> it was there not a famous incident when you recreated the, the referee push that Di Canio had done? Oh, yeah, well, that, that was a week before. Because Di Canio had gone, you know, and shit, where he'd been sacked, wherever, and then he'd gone back to live in Sicily, wherever he's from, and all with Rome. I can't remember where he's from. So... <laughs> Ian Wright, not no, Ian Wright, son, if, if I score, he said, when I score this evening, my son, he said, come on, we do the referee, you put me, I push, I'll put, you push me over, I'll go down like the referee. Went, yeah, lovely. Two minutes, right scores. So he comes running up the halfway line. I, I know, he puts her, I put, he goes down like the referee. Well, three days later, we signed the canny up. He comes in, you effing stupid bees. You blah, 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 blah. Everybody forgets about this situation. Now I'm back page in a paper again. <laughs> <laughs> Brilliant. Absolutely superb. You touched on, obviously, the likes of uh, Michael Carrick, Joe Cole, Jermaine Defoe, Frank Lampard, all coming through as youngsters in that squad. Were you aware at that time they were going to go right to the top? And Rio, yeah, I think um, we knew. I think Joey Cole was the best uh, as a youngster. I mean, we didn't really you know. I mean, Frankie Lampard, Frankie Lampard. Well, at the time, Carrick, and I think Joey Cole and Carrick, we're better players than Frankie Lampard at the start. I think Frankie Lampard ended his career the better. You know, we, we knew Frankie was great, but when he went to Chelsea, we didn't realise that he was that good, you know? Yeah. I mean, he, he was, he just, he just, uh, you know, he burst on the scene at 18. I think he, when he got to about 22, 23, 24, that's when he started becoming a player he was. I think the others were, were you know, were, were getting better praises before that sort of age. So, I mean, Joey Cole was the one. That, that everyone looked at as a kid when he was 15, 16. Obviously, Rio, Rio, everyone knew Rio was going to be a great player, but I think the four or five of them, Defoe as well, they went on to be unbelievable players. I mean, that that's a good thing that Harry could do, Harry Redknapp. You could get old players. You know, I only had a couple of years left when I went to to West Ham. Right, he had a couple of years left when he went to West Ham. And Decani had a couple of years left. So I think what he'd done to get players, that really experienced players with a couple of years left in there, in their legs to play with the young boys who was coming through. He was always good at that, Harry. Yeah, how, how was working with Harry? Is he, was he the top notch as a manager? Yeah, Harry, I mean, he was the only manager you, you scored H, you know, Harry and everyone else was boss or governor. And, yeah, but he, he, uh, he, he was like an old granny sometimes. You know. <laughs> There's a famous story. You used to get the arm and you know, he's like, they're martial, like, you know, don't laugh, you know. One of you laughed, the old, the old dressing room laughed. You know, <laughs> Yeah, it was, it was great. Uh, 
He was great at, uh, you know, make you laugh. I mean, he was to make you eat, eat and get you uh, ease. I mean, we was in the quarterfinal of the FA Cup once and can't remember where we were playing. We were away up north somewhere, Leeds, Sheffield, somewhere we were playing away at West Ham. It's a quarterfinal, FA Cup. We haven't seen Harry. I think he's been at Cheltenham all week racing. Doncaster, he's been somewhere else racing. So, comes in quarter of an hour before the game, door opens, it's Harry. First time we've seen him a week. Quarter of an hour before the Saturday afternoon kick-off. He walks in. You're in the right, lads. You went, it's important that West Ham win the Cup this year because if West Ham win the FA Cup this year, I get loads of money and I can buy better players for next season. <laughs> <laughs> Wait a bit, if you're good at me, yeah? Oh, no, no, we got beat. I've got no contract, so that's <laughs> There's a famous story uh, involving a fine with yourself and Harry Redknapp and up here at Glen Eagles. Do you, yes. care, to, do you care to discuss that with us? Or? Yeah, I, uh, I ended up beating Mike Newell up. He was struck. Mike Newell used to... I don't, did he play... Uh, Abde manager, I think he became, didn't he? Yep. He became, he was Abde manager and uh, he'd had an argument with, the, with the ex-wife. and So I, I had the ump, so I beat him up. And it was great rules in it. Because <laughs> 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 I beat him up and he had blood, he, he ran and... Uh, Glen Eagles, the hotel, the golf, they, they rang the police, and the police come, and I thought, ah, oh, better own up. They went, oh, did you, did you know, um, there's a law that you'd be able to protect your family or something. If you thought you were, did you think your wife was under threat? I went, yeah. And he went, oh, that's all right. And I went, what? You're not, you're not, you ain't going to rescue it now. I went, oh, I've got to move, yeah? <laughs> Brilliant. So he just let me up. He just thought, you know, and Mike, you all they couldn't think he said he fell over, God bless him. So I can't. I don't think I can get done now. Is it too far now? And it's gone too long. Now. Yeah, oh, it's, it's done now. Um, but it's, yeah, uh, so case closed. So I got away with it, really. <laughs> but uh, yeah, so Harry, I was meant to be in training. I was meant to be injured, but uh, I said I was ill. I rang up, said I was ill, but I was up in Glen Eagles meeting with me, Shearer, Jim. Uh, who, who was it? Stephen Hendry, Jim Davidson, me all, all that. Stuff. So <laughs> Harry fined me two weeks' wages. Because he found out in the paper I was in Glen Eagles, I weren't ill, so I, I, I appealed. So, so we took it to the FA, and I got fined thirty grand. So, I, I had the best lawyer in the world, a fella from, from South Africa. So I flew him in just for laugh, you know, just to take West Ham, to take West Ham. So I flew the sp best sports lawyer in, country, in in the world, put him up Park Lane in the Ritz and all that. He was down there, he was drinking. Bottles of this and but all on the all on the bill, having on the bill, weeks on a deep first class, so thirty grand fine. So I, I won. So I put, you know, I didn't have to pay West Ham thirty grand. So as I've got as I've got raised, not guilty. I've gone to Harry, I like you, Harry. So I put me, I put the expenses in forty grand for the best lawyer in the world. And they went, no, you have to pay your own expenses. I went, what? Harry went, I like you, Razor. So I got fine thirty <laughs> grand, got away with it. It cost me forty grand. <laughs> So you're ten, you're ten grand down. I, still, I walked out, right? I walked out there. Still think I'd won. Okay. <laughs> That's super. That's superb. Just, just a few quick fire he questions. To... Lobster, he was having lobster. <laughs> he was drinking champagne like James Bond, 1968. Following the 74. One of them. Yeah, lovely. Of course he was. He only said about ten words. <laughs> Brilliant. That's superb. Just, just a few quick fire questions to do with football and yourself, Razor. Who, um, who's the best player you've played along with? Who's the best player you've played with? Oh. Put you in the spot. Glenn Hoddle. Glenn Hoddle. Yes. That's superb. Glenn Hoddle was doing. He was doing. Uh, Glenn Hoddle was doing what David Beckham was doing twenty years before Beckham, when people could hurt you. Right. Well, who's uh, who's the best player you've played against? Cantona, Bergkamp, or Zola. You rattled that all fast. Eric, Eric, what's that? What's the little one? Who can edit? Celtic. Who loved? What's his name? Barcelona, Swedish. Oh, uh, Hendrik Larsson. Oh, Hendrik Larsson. Yeah. Yeah, of course. Sorry, you repeat with this player. <laughs> I've never played. I've played. I've played against Celtic twice. Celtic, I've played yet. So I've only. I've never been. I think I played Rangers once in a. In your career, Razor was a. I played Celtic. Uh, a pre-season friend, so I've only played up there twice. In, in your career, Razor, was there ever any chat, maybe with an agent, about you ever coming up to Scotland to play? Or? Yeah, I was, I could, and, uh, Celtic was sniffing in the 90s, and about two years later, I was, I was, I didn't, I was at Liverpool, so I stayed at Liverpool, Celtic wanted me, 
Then, about two years later, Rangers wanted me, and I was, I was in the car going to Rangers, and uh, Liverpool changed their mind, and I turned around and come back. Oh, really? I was there you go. Back, so, yeah, I could have for both during the 90s. Perfect. Moving on from football, once you hung up the boots, um, you made a few appearances on reality TV in 2004. Uh, you flew to Australia and you took part in I'm a Celebrity, get me out of here. Um, how was your jungle experience looking back now? Oh, I loved it. Oh, I loved it. It was... Uh, I've done a lot of TV, so that, that, that was... Because people... People, you know, they go, what, what are you doing the jungle for? And they're going, oh, I'm too fear, you know, get over my fear of heights or snakes. I've done it for the money. It was wonderful <laughs> money. Do you know what I mean? But it was a wonderful holiday. So I was getting loads of dough to go on a proper holiday. It was a brilliant, brilliant time. Um, it was horrible once you got in, you know. It changed. It soon changed. It was, you know, it was, there was a lot of spiders and, and snakes and, and noises. When, in the dark, when the, when the, when the, when the sun goes down, in the jungle, it's very noisy. Oh, it's horrible. So it was a scary experience, but it was yeah. wonderful. Australia is a wonderful place. I mean, that that lineup in two thousand and four was. I mean, that was the year that Peter Andre and Katie Price were in it as well. They kind of sparked up that that romance. You had the likes of Kerry Katona, who Kerry McFadden at the time. Um, I think she went on to won the show, didn't she? She won it that year. Kerry Kerry won it. Yeah. Um, Peter Peter and Katie Price Jordan got got together, which I'm um, you know. I was always trying to sleep, so I missed out on that. That'd be good viewing, that. That'd be, nice. <laughs> that'd, that'd be late night viewing. You wouldn't, I wouldn't have had to put number 932 on the video. I oh, would have had to them. Get 10 minutes free. <laughs> <laughs> How, um, I mean, there was also guys, if you look back, like see Johnny Rotten, Mike Reed, Jenny Bond. There was a, a right mix of characters in that camp, wasn't there? I was good. I'll tell you what, I thought it was Johnny, John, Johnny Rotten was like, as crazy as see me. He's one of the cleverest man I've ever, I've ever spoke to. Sat down to a really, really interesting, clever man. But that, oh, when we went in jungle, all they told us was um, black. Hold up, I got it the wrong way around. Yeah, black spiders, brown snakes, kill you. Yeah, right. you've got like an hour to live with a brown. Sp <laughs> I've got to get it right. If a brown <laughs> snake and a black spider bite you, you've got an hour to live. But if like. A black snake and brown, they bite, you got you got days to live. So if a brown snake bites you, he said, don't worry. He said, the doctor's 10 minutes away with the anti-venom. You know, just come in, put your hand in the and doctor come in, give your anti-venom, you'll be right. Johnny Rotten went, hold up, hold up, hold up. He went, what happens if I get bitten by a brown snake? And I said, doctor, doctor. And he comes running in, running in the camp with the anti-venom. And he gets bit by a brown snake. Who's he going to give the anti-venom to? <laughs> Good That's point. The question. <laughs> You'll you be... Got these, you got to know the answer to these questions, didn't you? <laughs> very, very scary in there. <laughs> after after the jungle... Especially if Jordan fancied you. Oh. <laughs> Let's get bit by her. Oh, no anti-venom to that. No anti-venom to that. <laughs> After uh, the jungle, you've you've done a, a few. <laughs> I'm just trying. <laughs> yeah, you've done the the celebrity Big Brother as well in 2013. Yeah, uh, you got you got to the final. You, you finished fifth, but you got to the final. How did oh, how I did? Don't have to spoil. <laughs> what did you say you nuggets? You got to the, got to the final. Would have done, wouldn't it? Well, we'll cut that a bit out. Sorry, what was the In 2013, you got to the the final of Celebrity Big Brother. Yeah, um, yeah, I, come, yeah, <laughs> <laughs> I walked right into that, did I? <laughs> how um, <laughs> how did that experience differ from the jungle? I'm trying to keep a straight face. That, that was that was the best TV show I've done. That one. Um, right. I. Uh, that one because you just got there was no scary anything, there was nothing scary in there. I mean, Jordan went in there or nothing, but nothing scary. Just, you get fed, you got your bags, you got your drink. So that was it. That was, I'm, I'm, I'm a lazy so so anyway. So that was that was a great TV show. I, mean, I had some great people in there. Can't yeah, yeah. Nuggets, but uh, that's what I was going to say because it was like so Frankie the Tory, you had clear from steps. Yeah. Uh, you had uh, Ryan Maloney, who was Toad Fishing Neighbours. Yeah. Uh, Rylan, who was yeah. in it. And Kathy like I said, EastEnders, course, you sexy lady. <laughs> uh, Kathy, Kathy Beale, we said, yeah, that's yeah. that's right. What's her real name? Sorry, what's her? Um, excuse my ignorance. What's her? Oh, you put me under pressure now. <laughs> this is me getting you back. <laughs> This is me getting you back. Oh, 
Cafe Bill is. <laughs> Oh, man, you we'll, go, we'll, go, we'll go with Cathy we'll Beale, okay? Um, Rylan as well. We can't leave it there. We can't, we've got to quit. Come on, fix it. Good goal. Alexa. <laughs> Alexa. 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 Hold up. Alexa. 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 You beat me to it. <laughs> yeah. Gillian, sorry, Gillian. Gillian seemed lovely. Um, <laughs> She's the funniest lady I've ever met in my life, huh? Get out of my cat! She's stupid <laughs> crazy. But where I was going with that is you had a bit of a bust up with the, the two Americans that you said, which was Heidi and Spencer. Um, what, what happened there? Uh, they, uh, they, they said something. I won't really can't say it on from this. <laughs> That's right, I'll just leave the question. Which is with Kathy Bill's real name? Gillian Tarpel, Mrs. Ruddock <laughs> uh, They said so, it was very, very evil. So I reacted, I reacted in a good, proper centre. I'm a centre half, you know. You know, you've got to look up your teammate. So. Went, in, went in two feet. I went in two footed and chin eye. <laughs> I've got a yellow. Oh, perfect. That um, thank horrible, and I just stood up for everyone. Yeah, um, you made good friends with Rylan in the house, like we said. Um, yep. Was am I right in saying he was involved in your wedding? You know, the missus was in the background there. Yeah, he was. Uh, he was my ring bearer. Now, don't take it the wrong way. <laughs> I never said that. <laughs> uh, hold on, I can see your back. Can see your back. <laughs> no, he was. He was my ring bearer. He, he uh, sounds bit. Yeah, he, he uh, carried my ring to the altar. <laughs> what? My wedding ring. <laughs> oh, wedding ring. Okay, right. Perfect. Uh, you mentioned you're a bit of a cook as well. Um, <laughs> I'm going to listen to this back. This is going to be... Can I swear? Is it, like, can I swear on this? Uh, it goes out on Friday at 6 and it'll be over no, social media. There, there, there might be some children, but... This is going to be hilarious, brother. I have made you quite come across quite good. Oh, well, thanks for that, Razor. I appreciate no, no, that. No, it was a tough... It was a tough ask. <laughs> You're, you're coming through with flying colours, young man. Good. Well, 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 what we're I've only. Done, ha I'll give you a kick up the backside, and you've responded in the right way. Well done. Have you ever thought of going into management? That, that's it. That's... <laughs> Would you trust me with your football team? No comment. No comment. <laughs> Um, as I was saying, 2019, uh, you went on to Master Chef. You've said yourself you're the, a, a, a bit of a cook as well. Um, you did. You, you done well in that, mate. You, you got to the final of that as well. Third. <laughs> <laughs> I never said where you finished. You got to the final. <laughs> <laughs> I, always, I come second in that. Always, yeah, always the bride, mate. Never the bride. Now that, that I love that because everyone, everyone can cook. You know what I mean? Don't matter. There's a lot of things in life you can't do. You know, you're not clever enough. You'll never be fit enough. You're not skillful enough. You're not. You know, there's a lot of things you just can't do. Everyone could cook and everyone can get better. So it was a case of, because I, I could cook, you know what I mean, like eggs on toast or you can make a rubbish roast. You can have a go at things like any man can. But uh, going in there, I really, I really enjoyed it. really got better and better. And I, I love me cooking now. There, so I'm, I'm always, I cook every day. So I love nice. it. still my hobby. Nice one. Um, never, like trust, never trust, never trust a skinny chef. <laughs> the good point, mate. Good point. I mean? You're not tasting their own food enough, so that's why I'm buying them on. Well, you said you were good at cooking. One thing um, I've noticed that you're, you're quite good at as well is um, strip teasing, and that's how yeah. my missus reminds uh, remember you. Sorry, um, she's seen you on a league of a league of their own, giving Jamie yeah. Redknapp a, a lap dance. Did there was there much preparation involved in that? Yeah, um, because there is. You have to. You have to. Yeah, cause it's very, very cold in that studio. <laughs> I bet. So you have to. You have to prepare yourself in the right way. You, you never, you never held back, Risa. You never held back, did you? You went. <laughs> you have to warm yourself up a little bit, if you know what I'm saying. Yep. <laughs> so you have just have to warm, warm him up. Don't let me down now, son. Warm yourself up there, so you look all right on telly. Because you might not see it on telly, but there's about a thousand people looking at me, Winkle, in the audience. <laughs> That's. <laughs> You don't want to let yourself down. Yeah, no, but they did well, mate. It, it come out, it come out good. Thank you very much. <laughs> 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 oh, 
expert, are you? Um, nah, no, but my missus watched it and she said it was good. It was a good scene. <laughs> we, we, my book anyway. Oh, we're, oh, we're getting on to that, mate. That's oh, that's 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 got half the interview in it, definitely. I haven't, um, even, I haven't even mentioned one story that's in the book yet. Well, well, give us a give us a sneak preview. What um, what can you tell us that is in the book? Um, I've got Robbie Williams' sack from Take That. <laughs> Go on. Yeah, I can't. Well, he was meant to be in the recording studio. We'd take that doing a new album, and I kidnapped him and took him to my bar. And then when he come back, they got the sack. So the story's in there. But I mean, we would have had we wouldn't have had angels. We wouldn't have had Glastonbury. We wouldn't have had one night at the Albert Hall if it weren't for me. Oh. So it's all down for me that Robbie Williams is who Robbie Williams is today. Yep. After your health scare, Robbie reached out to you, didn't you, Razor? Yeah, yeah. No, he's, he's, I'm going to go out because he, he's been off the booze ring. He was, he was funny, he was. But, you know, he's had uh, mental health issues and then, you know, uh, he, I think he's had a few scares, health scares and uh, uh, drinking. So he, he's going, I'm going to go to, when this is all over, he's, I'm going to go to LA with him and, He's going to have to sit down and tell me off. So, yeah, I'm going to have a nice go out there and have a nice rest of him. Because he was like, one of my best pals, man, you know, in the 90s. Yeah. I mean, you mentioned the story there about how you got, got Robbie the sack. Your, your new book is out. It's called The World According to Razor, My Closest Shaves. What what else can we expect from the book? Is this is this audio? Is this so people see this? Both, right both, mate. No, we can see your, your pretty face on it as well. And we can see the book. There you go. So it's not like any normal sort of, it's not a biography well, or well, anything, is it? Well, what I was, I was sat here and lockdown was coming in and I thought everyone's going to do, everyone's going to do a book. So people kept saying, do a book, do a book, do a book. I'd done one when I was playing, which was rubbish because I couldn't really slaughter anyone, you know, so. And then I'm sitting there, I don't want to do a book it's going to get lost in autobiography. So I would do, I thought, I'd, I'd do a book which is about the stories off the pits, you know, the close shaves, but, you know, I'm, I mean, I closed Terminal Five down in Heathrow. They asked me what I've got in what I've got in my bag, and I said the wrong thing. <laughs> what did you say? The wrong thing. <laughs> and I had the armed police get me on the floor and everything. So there's another story. Um, got the I went on the went on the last with Nelson Mandela for two days. There's another story that was great. No, so, it, it's, it's just stories like that, just crazy, crazy situations. You know, you know, there's stories in life. You know, there's there's, there's a lot of Everyone believes in God, and, you know, you're different gods and whatever this guy, and praying, and, you know, I'm, I wasn't a big church goer, but, you know, I've always prayed. These are the stories when you, 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 you sat on your own, and you think, you pray like, God, please, God, please, get me out of this situation, I'll never do it again. Them sort of stories are in the book. Brilliant, brilliant. I mean, I, I've been on Amazon, I've had a look at it, I've read some of the reviews, okay, there's hundreds, there's hundreds, and there's not one below four and a half stars. Um, I, wouldn't, I, wouldn't, I wouldn't buy it for under 16. Oh, well, there we go, that's a wee hint. I've dropped the sea bomb a couple of times in it. <laughs> you know the one, Chelsea. Yes. <laughs> Don't worry about that word. Absolute fantastic book to read. I read this book in one day as I couldn't put it down. The stories and memories about Razor made me laugh so much. Excellent read and highly recommend. This one was before Christmas. It says the book is amazing. I laughed, I cried. I read the whole book in two days. One of the best books I've read. Razor's a legend and this book should be in every footy fan's Christmas stocking. I promise you will be in tears. It's a compulsive read. That was just two that I picked off from the top straight away, mate. Um, where, can, where can any of our viewers purchase it? Like I said, that was on Amazon. Yeah, I think you know. I think what what they've done there was there was going to go to bookshops. Then obviously COVID's come in, so that was a waste of time. So I think basically just go online. I think Amazon's the best one. If not, I go to search engines. My buzz. I think online's the best and the safest way to get it now. So you'll enjoy it. It's good fun. No, it's been absolutely great fun having you on the show, Razor. I'm actually going to have to nip to the toilet now because my sides are splitting. It's been an absolute pleasure. Love you. When's it on? Can you say that? I want to want to see how good. I I've made you look good. Oh, you made me look good. Well, it's, it's going out um, this Friday at six o'clock, Razor. Ladies and gentlemen, Neil Razor Ruddock. Thank you very much indeed. Thanks for giving me time and go and buy my book. Thank you very much.